Welcome to Year Around the Peninsula. I'm Army Sergeant Ryan Sharp. Army medics are tasked with saving lives and constantly trained to improve their abilities. One mistake, even a simple one, could cost a life. Army medics are tasked with saving lives. It is not an easy job and training is always being conducted. So we've got the, my medics here on the ground who do the treatments and then they'll hand the casualty or patient off to the flight medic who will treat in route as they evacuate to a higher level of care. When air support is used to evacuate, injured personnel are often in critical condition and must reach higher levels of medical care as soon as possible. It's faster to evacuate a casualty using an aircraft just because of the distance. We can evacuate faster and get them to care and save lives. This training can be used in both the combat environment as well as in garrison. I've used this out of training more times than I've used it in training. In Iraq, I've seen it used in Afghanistan pretty much anywhere where somebody's uh, life is seriously injured. As medics, it is critical for them to keep improving and learning from their mistakes. I've seen soldiers make mistakes during the training, but that's what we're here to do is train. And uh, I've seen people improve dramatically already just by the uh, cold load training. You could tell that they use the uh, skills that they learned in cold load when they fired up the uh, helicopter. With this training, these medics would be more proficient at medical evacuation and coordinating with air crews. I'm Army Sergeant Anthony Alcantar, Camp Casey, Korea. Medevac training is extremely important. The quicker the casualties make it to a higher level of care, the greater the chance of survival. Traditions get passed on from generation to generation in every culture. Senior Airman Taylor West shows us an organization built for keeping traditions alive. Since it officially opened in 1951, the National Gugak Center has been a musical reminder of Korean traditional arts for all those who walk the campus. The National Gugak Center has been taking charge of Korean court music since the Sila dynasty. Since then, we've integrated many different kinds of music into traditional Korean music. This center plays a role in preserving and passing down the Korean music for future generations. Despite how it may appear, the National Gugak Center offers much more than just children's classes. They offer adult instrumental courses and they also allow the opportunity to come and get a taste of Korean culture with their performances from Korean musical history. The Gugak Center also provides classes specifically for foreigners with English-speaking instructors who break down the history of the instrument and guide the class through a semester's worth of instructional classes. I really hope that in, in a very basic way that my students are going to um, have an idea about Korean music and maybe even fall in love and start going to watch some other performances. I think that music is one, it's really an important thing, even if we are not professional musicians, but it's a part of a country and a part of people's identity. Classes like these at centers like the National Gugak Center give foreigners the opportunity to truly feel what it's like to experience Korean culture through the art of music. Senior Airman Taylor West, Seoul, Korea. At the end of the semester, students show off their new skills in front of a live audience. From service to stardom, soldiers in Area 1 compete on stage with only their voice. The 2015 Operation Rising Star competition is on the way, and the contestants show us what they got. Private Joseph Johnson is all about singing. On the stage, he's not just a soldier, he becomes an artist. When I'm singing, it feels, it feels like I'm, I'm in a different place, and I'm in my own world, and you know, it feels like I can just let go of everything that has probably gone on in the past or in the past week doesn't matter how far in the timeline it's gone, you know, it just helps me to relieve happiness, anger, sad, you know, and it helps me to get through problems and stuff like that. So I love music. Music is a, my life focus. This is what I want to do, you know, I really want to do it. So I kept practicing and I practicing and I did a whole bunch of uh, different shows and stuff along the way and I took vocal lessons and stuff like that to become, you know, a singer. This is the 2015 Operation Rising Star, where soldiers compete to make their dreams come true, and they all share the dream of being the best at what they do. I'm Army Sergeant Anthony Alcantar, Camp Casey, Korea. The Operation Rising Star competition has been held for 11 years. Osan's fire department is gearing up for fire prevention week. Senior Airman Sidney Manning shows you how. 
Osan's Fire Department hosts a candy drive and open house to increase awareness for Fire Prevention Week, which will start in October. Master Sergeant Kevin Henderson says Fire Prevention Week is all about getting the community involved. So today we are opening up the fire station for a candy drive. The purpose of the candy drive is for at the end of Fire Prevention Week, we have a parade. And during the parade, we're going to be throwing the candy right back to the kids. It's going to be a great time. The theme this year is Hear the Beep Where You Sleep, which means every bedroom in your home should have a fire alarm. This year, the department wants to get kids excited a little ahead of time and collect candy to throw in the parade. Robin Sheehan says opening up the department for an open house helps kids understand what firefighters do. In addition to the candy drive, we're providing tours of the Osan Fire Department so that the community can really see what an everyday life of a firefighter entails and really what they go through on a daily basis to keep them safe. Senior Airman Sydney Manning, Osan Air Base, Korea. Osan's Fire Prevention Week kicks off October 4th. The theme this year is Hear the Beep, Where You Sleep. Battles can be messy, they can also be colorful. Gear up with Army Sergeant Kevin Spence as he steps out onto the battlefield. Being in the military, it's no surprise that soldiers like to come out and go to war. The battle is paintball, and these brave soldiers are gearing up. I did a lot of crawling, but I try to stay behind cover and have my friends flank from the side and uh, provide cover for me. While games like Call of Duty can desensitize your survival instincts, this doesn't stop Private First Class Kenneth Saros from understanding the importance of separating the two. I would certainly stick behind cover more because you always get that restart, and uh, I know in real life that you, you'll never get that chance. More Your Outdoor Recreation doesn't just offer tours. Family and MWR tour guide Haley picks up arms and steps out onto the battlefield. I was so scared so I cannot just move out and shoot the people. Most of the time I just hiding behind the trees and the other people said that I should run. Army Sergeant Kevin Spence, NJ, Korea. To book a tour, sign up at the USO Seoul, USO Camp Kim, or at the Moyer Outdoor Recreation Center. Protecting the nation's waterways is vital for a country's security, growth, and prosperity. Army Sergeant Frank Sanchez is at an event focused on just this. The top member of the United States Coast Guard, Commandant Admiral Paul Zakumt, speaks during a seminar hosted by the Korea Institute for Maritime Strategy. He speaks about the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard's joint training missions, allowing these forces to create a more cohesive partnership. Uh, our systems are one the same, uh, so they're compatible. He spoke with local media outlets about the advantages of combining military assets. Uh, my recommendation is, is, is start slow. Um, start with something as fundamental as search and rescue. Um, and search and rescue offshore, it could be the first ship that arrives. Army Sergeant Frank Sanchez, Seoul, Korea. The Admiral discussed topics such as improved national defense readiness and other critical maritime missions such as search and rescue, pollution response, and illegal fishing. Knowledge is power. Soldiers from the 65th Medical Brigade attend a class to find out how to manage their alcohol consumption and prevent drinking-related accidents. And so this is true. As a last part of 65th Medical Brigade's mentorship program, Prime for Life, Soldiers have an intimate discussion about alcohol safety. The goal is to know your body, the DNA makeup that you already have, and also supply you with what goes on in the choices that you make. Basically, what factors affect or influence your choices. So once you have that in play, that will determine the outcome. And most of us want desirable outcome. Nearly 88,000 people die from alcohol-related causes annually, making it the third leading preventable cause of death in the United States. The soldiers keep on hearing, know your limits, be responsible, but really not a whole lot of soldiers know, well, what's responsible drinking? What's knowing my limit? When I start feeling buzz, I, that's my limit. But there's more to that. Army Sergeant Kevin Spence, Yongsan, Korea. To learn more about alcohol abuse prevention, check out the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism homepage. That was your Around the Peninsula for Thursday, September 24th. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening.